afternoon and welcome along to Crafters TV. I'm Corinne Robinson and I'm going to take you through all the shows for today, Saturday, and we're going to have so much fun. So we've done Play Your Crafts Right and this show is our craft along. So I've got a very special guest and it's her very first craft along. So we are super excited to have Lily here showing you how to um, create a magnificent um, project something a little bit different using our card front collection so good afternoon Lily good afternoon Karen it's gonna be fun isn't it oh, I can't wait this is gonna be absolutely brilliant and I really hope you're gonna love the project as much as I've loved putting it together for you good 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 so we're going to be using our card fronts but we're also going to be using these fantastic shadow box dies as well i was around when these were launched when craig launched these so this is going to be super super fun so we're going to combine the two things just to show you how maybe when you buy one collection and then you buy another collection how you can then just sort of bring everything together that's what i love i love it when my crafting everything just sort of comes into to one big melded project you know you can use everything together so so what are we going to be making then Lily please okay so what we're actually going to make today is we well we're calling them card front coloring pads but we're not going to be making cards at all we're going to create this piece of home decor it's home decor item really so we're going to use three of our um, card front colouring pads, colouring each one using a different um, product from our Spectrum Noir range. We're going to be using our fabulous shadow box dies, bringing in a few of the sentiments from the pads, but that is what we're going to be crafting along to create today. That is absolutely beautiful and it's so lovely that you're showing how we can use the different, different pens to to craft along with those. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to be showing you how fabulous each of the different pens are that we've got within our Spectrum Noir range. But what do we actually need to be crafting along today with our craft along? Well, first of all, of course, you're going to need your colouring pad card front collections. So you're going to need the butterflies and botanics, your floral fly and your enchanted adventure. You're also going to need your 5 by 7 shadow box die. You'll need your Tri-Blend Deep Blends 24 pen collection and also your Tri-Blend Brush Complete collection. You'll need your Illustrator 36 piece box, the colour essentials. You will also need your Gemini die cutting machines. You'll need your um, full size or your pro. Um, for your classic pen sets, you'll need your yellows, greys, turquoises and <coughs> greens. You're also going to need your Spectrum Noir Clear Overlay Sparkle Pen, your Centura Pearl Fresh White A3 card, 3mm red liner tape and finally your Collal All Purpose Glue. Oh, well, that looks absolutely wonderful. But I'm, I'm assuming, Lily, if somebody is not quite so far into their colouring journey, then they could just maybe focus in on one pen collection if they didn't have them all. You're going to show us them all mm. to show how you can create with the different ones. But if I just had the classics or I just had the brush pens, mm. I'd still be able to create this, wouldn't I? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to show you the different effects you can get from the different sort of pens that we've got within our range. Of course, if you've only got one sort of pen, so the classics or the illustrators, or maybe you're getting your very first pen set today from Spectrum Raw, of course you can be using exactly the same pen, pen range for each of the different images. So whatever you've got in your crafty stash at the moment, this is absolutely going to work for you. And you're going to have great fun creating whatever pens you're going to be using. Thank you. I just thought, just so that people know that you know Absolutely, you don't have yeah. to go through all the pen collections if you've not got them. Okay, so the focus of our craft along is the colouring pad card front collection. So you're going to get 156 sheets in total. So what you're going to get is you're going to get four different sets. So you can see them just down here. And each set has six different images. And each image is repeated six times. So you're going to get six lots of each image four times over and the four sets that you're going to get are your spiritually wild these are beautiful now I should, what I should have done is there we go so you can be doing coloring them like that isn't that beautiful the gorgeous gorgeous side stepper card look at that I love how they've inked around the edges so when you get them they look like this in the black and white I mean we were saying earlier you could entangle these if you wanted to you can just color in a little bit you can color in a lot but when you color them in this is the effect that you will be getting. Isn't that spectacular? 
spectacular. And again, whichever pen range collection you have got, that's going to work perfectly for you. The next one we're going to look at is our Enchanted Adventure. And I've got this gorgeous, uh, I've got a couple of cards here. Look at that. And I love how you can make different size projects with hit this. So, you know, make the, it the focus of your card. If you like doing your shading, you can. If you're not, then you could colour these with your block colours. Add it onto your card base. So we've got the same size card front, but different size cards. And in actual fact, I'm looking at this one and I can see that this one would appear to be a twisted easel. So remember all those different card shapes that you've got and these are just going to be the focal point of those. So that is the Enchanted Adventures and look at this. We were talking yesterday in the show with Craig about if you've got something white rather than just leaving it so that it looks like you've forgotten to colour it. We've just gone round the edge with a little bit of grey just to show. Just It almost makes that white even whiter which is a really clever technique. The next one we've got, the penultimate one, is our butterflies and botanics. And again, as we were saying, each set has three sheets of sentiments included. Gold, silver and your bronze as well. And when you've coloured them in, wow, look at that, I love this one. You've nearly coloured the whole of the card front in here. I was looking at, which one? This one, and I'm thinking you could easily cut round the edge here and make it a shaped topper. That would look beautiful. And then your final one that you've got is the floral flight, which is beautiful. So you've got your birds in here. You've got all the lovely detail. Now, that one's not from there. Let's see if I've got one in here from the floral flight. Oh, oh wow, look at this. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Just picking out a couple of those colours in there. And also with the budges but you regards in there as well. So if you want to colour them, you can colour them like this. Now these have been printed onto the perfect card stock ready for you to be colouring in with your classics, with your illustrators, with your um, Spectrum Noir um, brush alcohol brush pens, whichever you want. So these are going to work perfectly. Now if you want all 56 sheets over the four packs, they are $31.95 today or $41.55. So if you're a Platinum member or your first order, that's going to be $25.56 or $33. Um, dollars 24 and don't forget until tomorrow night at midnight you're going to get a bonus 100 points every time you well when you spend over 25 pounds so obviously this will um hit that that threshold now it wouldn't be a craft along if somebody wasn't crafting along we need it's the name it sort of gives us a clue in the name doesn't it so we have um pam with us hello pam all the way over from america how Hello. fantastic to see you. You've done a couple of craft alongs before, have you, Pam? Yes. Oh, oh you're, you're telling Lily and I what to do <laughs> then, because we're still quite new on this. So you've got the, um, the colouring front pads then, have you? Yes, I've yeah. done all of them. And which, and which pens do you like to colour with then? So when you're sort of colouring, which, which would be your pen of choice? The illustrators. The illustrators. You didn't even, you didn't hesitate there, did you? <laughs> you didn't <Nope>. hesitate. <laughs> well, that's it. Lily's going to show us with the other pens, but if you want to do it all with the illustrators, then that would be absolutely perfect. So if you've got everything you need there, Pam, and you're all ready to go there, Lily, then I think we should just crack on then. Let's see what we're going, how we're going to make this then, please. Absolutely. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of colouring using our fabulous unicorn image. So all I've done is I've taken this out of my card front colouring pad. And what I tend to do when I am working with these, I will just tear out the page um, that I'm working on. I won't work directly into the pad. If you do want to keep these in the pad and colour with them still in the pad, what I would recommend is just take a piece of cardstock, scrap paper or card, it doesn't need to be any fancy card, and just have that underneath just to protect the page underneath um, in your book. When I'm colouring, I do always have a piece of scrap paper underneath. That's a good idea when you're using your alcohol pens because what it will mean is it's got the ink's got somewhere to go. It can absorb into that paper underneath and it'll give you a better blend onto your colouring. We're going to start with the unicorn and I'm going to colour this one in using our classiques. Now the reason I've chosen our classiques for this one is you can see this is a really, really detailed um, image. We've got some really small, um, fine detailed areas in there and we need a nib to our pen that's going to be really nice and fine it's going to allow us to get into all that detail with our classics yes we do have our fabulous chisel nib and that is great for lots of techniques perhaps edging um, your cardstock 
for um, colouring your ribbon, your pearls, or colouring in larger areas to lay down a lot of colour quite quickly. We also have our amazing, super, super fine bullet nib. You can see how amazingly fine that is. And it's going to be perfect for when we're colouring in this image because it's going to allow us to get into all that fine detail without going, through, um, going outside of the lines at all. So it's going to give us the best result that we can possibly get onto our image. So I'm starting off with the GT1. Um, and I believe this is from the turquoises set um, of your classics that we've got on the show today. And the way um, that I tend to work with my alcohol pens is that I'll lay down my uh, palest colour first just to get that, um, that co initial colour laid down um, onto our image. And I'm working in small circular motions. That's just going to give us um, the most even, even coverage of ink. It's going to give us a nice seamless layer of that palest colour onto our image. And I'm starting off with this flower. It's one of those things I always, um, when I start colouring, I'm always not quite sure which area shall I colour first. Um, there's no sort of right or wrong. I always say focus on one area of the image at a time and break, break your colouring pads down into sections. So don't just think of this as one full image. Think of it in different component parts. So I'm, first of all, I'm focusing on the flower. Then I might focus on the leaves. Then I might focus on the wings. Think of it in different sections. And it just makes it a lot more manageable when we come to do our colouring. It's just not quite so overwhelming. So we've added our um, GT1 all over that flower area to lay down our base colour. Then I'm going in with my GT2. And for this particular blend, I am using three different tones. So our classics, and it's the same with all of our um, Spectrum Noir pens actually, as we'll see as we go through the craft along and explore the different sorts of pens that we've got within our Spectrum Noir family. They're really cleverly named and it makes it really, really easy for us to colour and choose um, our different tones that are going to work together. So your letters that you, you've got um, sort of denote your colour family. So I'm working with all the GT um, colour family for this particular one. And I know that if I choose one pen that's got GT in the name and another pen that's also got GT in the name, they're going to blend together beautifully. In addition to the letters that you'll find in the names of the pens, you'll also see numbers there. Now, they're really, really easy to understand uh, with our numbering system to our pens. The higher the number, the darker it's going to be. So we start off with GT1. I've just gone in with GT2. And then finally, I'm going in with GT3, which is our darkest. And I'm just adding my GT3 into the areas which I think they'll be shadow and will be the darkest on this particular flower. So there is clues within each of these images. So they've been really, really cleverly designed and cleverly um, illustrated these colouring card fronts um, because they give you clues as to where the light and shade within our image will be. So I'm not having to think too much. I'm not having to worry about light and shade or where the light source is coming from. Where there's um, sort of more depth of lines, there's going to be more, uh, more shadow there and it's going to be a little bit darker. So it's nice and easy to colour these don't need to be an expert in colour theory or anything like that. You're going to get fabulous results uh, no matter what your skill level. So very easily we coloured in that um, particular flower. We're going to carry on with this same colour family. I'm actually going to go on to the mane of the unicorn. So I've just picked up the wrong pen. <laughs> I, always, I always do that. I've got a habit of picking up the wrong pen, but it doesn't matter. I'm going back in with my palest one, my GT1, within this colour family. I'm going to do exactly the same technique and I'm going to colour over um, this um, mane using our palest colour just to lay down that colour. I'm working pretty much in circular motions but can you see there's so much fine detail um, that mane tapers down to such a fine point on the end. Having such a fine bullet nib onto these classics just makes it really, really easy to get into all that fine detail. I'm not worried about having quite a chunky, um, cumbersome nib to my pen. It's going to allow me to get into all that detail really, really easily. I love the brush nibbed ones, but I think you're absolutely right. This has got a lot of fine detail. I think that I would struggle with the brush nib absolutely. to get into, into all those little nooks and crannies, wouldn't I? You know, it's yeah. 
for the detail. But if you're loving the pens, um, we've put on the on the screen the 54-piece collection, if that's what you want. And the pens that Lily's used so far have all come from that 54-piece collection. And you're going to get your turquoises, blues, yellows, pinks, greens, browns, reds, purples and greys in there. So I think you've just about covered all eventualities. So these would be 69.99 today instead of, that's a good price, instead of your normal um, 89.99, I think it would be. So you're saving um, well over 20%. So it's $106.99 if you go for that. But look at that platinum price at 55.99 for 54 pounds so it's for 54 pence sorry i was just thinking aloud it is just over a pound a pen if you are a platinum member which is absolutely amazing so you i could let you just explain what you're doing there again lily sorry absolutely and no problem at all i mean yeah for just over a pound a pen for this quality of alcohol pen is absolutely incredible it certainly and is. like corin says you've got so many different colors in there and i was saying earlier how easy it is to understand what colors to put together because of the the naming system of the pens but not only that within those sets because we put the sets into colour families you get almost like two sort of blends per pack so you get three pens that will work together beautifully and then a different three pens that will also blend them together perfectly so you get three you know you get two three pen blends per pack which is amazing because it just makes it so easy to know which pens are going to blend together to give you the best results so with this main I've use pretty much the same technique as I did on the flower. So I went all over using our palest colour. Then I added in a little bit more shadow using our GT2. And now I'm going in with my GT3 and I'm sort of flicking. So you tend to think of the flicking technique just for brush pens, but you can of course still be doing that same flicking technique on the main like we are here using our um, bullet nibs as well. You can really see that. You can. It almost looks like that intense um, hair near his neck doesn't it and then where you can almost see it becomes a bit more translucent as it's blowing yeah. out from behind him you can really see how just by adding the the darker where it touches his body you're getting that intensity of color yeah absolutely and it's so easy to create literally just three pens and we do talk about our three pen blend an awful lot just because it's such an easy place for us to start if you are new to your um, your coloring then it's sort of a nice little rule to follow if you like to have your three pen blends you just sort of you know if you've got three pens you're going to be able to get plenty of depth and definition onto there but it's not too overwhelming i mean sometimes i'll work with like a five or even a six pen blend and if you are new to coloring that can sometimes seem like an awful lot by going with your three pen blend and the the pack design of these particular pen sets that we've got on the show with our classics the six pen sets has been designed in mind with that um, three pen blend so it just makes it really really easy it takes the thinking out of the coloring and it just allows us to get on with a really fun bit which is which is the actual coloring rather than the thinking about coloring it's the actual doing which is just brilliant so using that exact same technique onto the tail so flicking that color out and it's giving us that depth and definition now i'm adding more shade just to the left hand side of the legs of the unicorn just because um, the main is obviously behind the legs and we want to cast that shadow um, behind there and give that, that effect of light and shade um, and shadow onto there. And it's exactly the same um, with his back there. And he's going to be casting a shadow, so we're going to flick out a little bit of the darker colour onto there and that's going to give us that, that sort of texture. And you can see we've already got some of the detail added into that. Um, I was going to say stamped image. It's not actually stamped. We don't printed even have image. to stamp it. That's the one, print, <laughs> printed image. So we don't even need to have acrylic blocks or rocker blocks or stamp systems to be able to work with these. We've got them already printed and they are on the perfect um, paper. Well, I say paper, it's card really, to be using with our alcohol pens, which it means you're going to get that smooth blend every single time really, really easily without um, sort of having bleeding without having it run or anything like that. Something that is normal is to see some of the pen on the reverse side. Um, it will bleed through to the other side, that's perfectly normal. That is a good sign when you're using your alcohol pens, um, but your um, paper is absolutely perfect for use with all your alcohol-based mediums. We're getting so many lovely comments on here. Kerry um, Valet, Val 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 
just a minute, Valeti, I think it is. Val I'm sorry if I said that wrong. It says, good, um, good morning from Virginia Beach. She thinks your voice is very soothing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Treasure Heart says, coffee friends and crafting, perfect way to oh, spend the day. Oh, Terry perfect. H says, she's going to try and craft along today that was good we'd oh, love to see what yes. you did yes. absolutely yes send and, us pictures uh, please i think this um craft along is just the right time for mary pat 1000 my shadow box dies arrived this week so i'm super excited today to see the demos love lily's creations Aww. so we've got uh, mary from maine says hi obviously terry does everybody's there so yeah uh, welcome to everybody and thank you lovely to have you along um watching this and seeing how Lily um, is going to create this wonderful sort of project, uh, to perfect way to show your colouring pad card front collection if that's what you want to get today. But it's just so versatile, it's just so many different ways to use it. That looks really curved, that leaf, Lily. It really it does, does, just doesn't like it? that shadow in the centre, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, so all we've done is we've gone in with DG1, um, so we're taking this pen and we're going to go all over the leaf using our circular motions once again just to fill in that with our palest colour and then we're going to go up to our next colour which is DG2 and again so this is out of your green collection absolutely on there. yeah so, so you, you get you are, the, the one two and the three they're not always consecutive numbers they're no. always numeric but they're not always sometimes you'll get two four and five or something yeah. like that but they will always go up so that you can add that definition won't they yes yeah, so you don't always have to shade with just um sort of consecutive numbers you can miss numbers and um, you can do it however you like but you know if it's within the same letter family that it's going to work absolutely perfectly so if we go to our next leaf and something i always do when i'm coloring is always turn your artwork if you have got one of the ro totally Ooh. tiffany rotating design shall boards shall i show that <gasps> while you're coloring, coloring please right, do I've not, I've not actually ever touched one of those <gasps> ones i'm quite Ooh, excited right these are amazing if you like Lily, find that you've, you've struggled. Then what you need, oh, that's your magnet bit. You want this, uh, something like this Lazy Susan. This is from Totally Tiffany. So I was trying to say, it lies flat, just like this. So you can have, I'm trying to see if it, um, if it lifted, but no, it lies flat. And it's basically, it's like a Lazy Susan that turns, but it's perfect for your crafting. Because what you can do is you can put your magnetic shim on, and then you've got a bulldog clip to put on there. And then, that will then become magnetic. So we're also giving you the magnetic ruler. So if you are trying to, um, you know, line something up, then you're going to have, you know, the magnetic ruler that works like that. But what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to say that was my card front. I'll be able to clip it on. And like Lily's doing there, turning it around, if I'm colouring the little bit here, closest to me, I can then turn it around if I then want to colour here or if I want to colour here. I can turn it around. So, you know, it just makes... I'm not twisting and turning and contorting i think it it avoids the contortions it just means that you can turn it around to work whichever way and if you prefer to prop it up then and you've got a um one of those desk beat pieces that you know put things at an angle then you can put it on there and it will still work so you're going to get the the rotating board which is the white piece underneath so you're going to get this bit that turns and you're also going to get the um the magnetic set as well and wow that's a good price so this is 20 pounds and 28 today or 24 dollars 48 and you're going to get both pieces on there so this is going to save you 30 percent today but you normally would be paying sorry how much 15.99 just for the rotating design board and then i'm getting another 15.99 for the magnetic set as well 12.99 sorry so you're going to get all of those today for 20 pounds and 28 bucks so if you're a platinum member and paying 16 pound 22 you're only paying a few pence more for the whole lot so that sounds absolutely perfect so yeah if that's how you want to do it so you know so that you can rotate and turn it rather than having to keep turning your project then go for that because what you could do then is um, attach your scrap card underneath as well so that will stay nice and firm so yeah absolutely perfect 
Absolutely, that'll just make your life so much easier because never ever sort of rotate your wrist or your arm in areas like that. You need to be turning your artwork. It will just make it so, so much easier. And having your rotating design board will make your life an awful lot easier. And for that sort of price today, it really is definitely one to go for. So on this leaf, I'm going all over with my DG1, which is my lightest tone within this three pen blend. Well, I say three pen blend. We're gonna add a little bit of something else in the, the end, but for now, we're keeping it as a three pen blend. So we're going in with our mid tone, which is our DG2. And like Karen was saying, we've got that line down the center of our leaf. And that's giving us a clue as to where the shade will be. So I'm adding some more of our mid tone into the center, down that center line, just to give that, that effect almost like it's slightly folded uh, and you've got that depth and that shadow onto there. Then we're going in with our DG3. So these are ascending um, numbers within this DG family, but of course they don't have to be. Um, it's just whatever works, whatever you've got in your collection. Just have a little play, a little look around um, as to what's gonna blend together. So that's our green, but I'll, I want to sort of lift that a little bit and give it a little bit more, an extra bit of something. So I'm going in with CT1, which is from our yellow pen set. And around the edges, I'm literally just adding a little bit of the yellow just to give that extra bit of depth and color onto there. Only very, very lightly, but it's gonna add a little bit of something. And the fantastic thing about alcohol pens is, absolutely, we can add color. We can layer up our colors. They are translucent ink, so we layer the colors on top of each other to build up our shade and our dimension and make our images really pop. But in addition to actually being able to add colour, we can also actually take colour away, which is absolutely incredible. So although our greens that we had underneath were actually darker than our yellow, we can add our yellow over the top and it will lift that colour from underneath um, and will allow that yellow to come through. You'll never get that true yellow colour if you're colouring over the top of a darker, darker tone, but you will be able to get some of that yellow showing through as we lift up that colour underneath. And it's such a fun, fun technique just to be able to add different tones um, when you are coming to blend. You don't just have to use the same colour family like we're doing here. We're bringing in a completely different colour family, the CT colour family, just to give our leaves that extra realistic quality. And it's such a fun technique to be able to play around with. Um, and you're doing exactly the same technique on each leaf, but you're absolutely. just taking them one at a time. And I think it's easier, isn't it? Well, the ink's fresh, it, it blends so much easier, doesn't it? Absolutely. It's always easier to work um, sort of wet onto wet, if you like, rather than trying to blend onto dry cardstock. It just, it almost like bleeds into each other and you get that seamless blend so, so easily. So I always say about um, how we break our images down into sections to make it less overwhelming, but also it means that we're going to get that best blend we possibly can because um, if we have colour in a big area, or colouring in multiple areas all at once. By the time we've gone back to the bit that we've added our palest colour onto first, it might have actually dried, and then we'll find the blending a little bit more difficult. Of course, it is possible we can go back in there and sort of reawaken that colour by adding a bit more of that palest colour down onto there, but it just makes it so much easier to focus on one area at a time to allow us to get that seamless blend with ease without having to go back in and add more of the same colour on. It just makes our lives a lot easier. So in this instance, I'm colouring three leaves at a time, um, which is absolutely fine. They're only quite small areas, so that's going to work absolutely perfectly. The ink's not going to have dried um, by the time I come to add my top layer. But just using exactly the same technique onto all of these, it's going to build up this image really, really nicely um, using our green tones. So we are getting our green pen set within um, that particular collection. I have to say greens are absolutely essentials. If you're going to be colouring your flowers and your foliage, I mean we've got a whole um, a whole pad within that collection where we've got loads of all your uh, your natural flowers and your foliage and your flora and your fauna. You're going to need your greens to be able to create realistic looking images using that pad. So this is a perfect collection to go for because you've got such a comprehensive range of green pens. You've got six different pens within the green sets. You've got plenty to be going out. And of course, be bringing in your yellows like I am here. You could also be even be bringing in your browns if you're doing your autumn leaves and your oranges, your sort of bronzy type tones. Um, so you can make them look very, very different. It's amazing how quickly you. that um, image is coloured up. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's something that you want to take your time over and you want to really, really enjoy, but it's not something that's going to take you sort of too long. It's 
it's manageable, <laughs> if yes. you know what I mean. Because sometimes, it's I have to say, there's certain images that I've sat and coloured and five hours later, it doesn't look any different. Yeah. Which is great sometimes, and I, I love my colouring, so I do love just sitting down and colouring for hours and hours on my end. But sometimes you want something that's a little little bit quicker, a little you bit more manageable. You the results, don't you? You, you Absolutely. need that, um, that satisfaction. That gratification. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And this is going to give you that. It is enough. There's enough detail in there that you can sort of really sink your teeth into these and really get lost in the colour and really enjoy it. But it's not overwhelming if you are a new crafter. It's not something you're going to have to labour over for days if you don't want to. I mean, absolutely, by all means, if you are an experienced crafter and you're really into your colouring and you've got all your pens and you've got all your different sort of techniques under your belt, then absolutely spend hour upon hour, if you like, going in with your really, really... Um, sort of advanced techniques and these will look absolutely incredible by all means you can be doing that but if you are new to crafting I think these are absolutely perfect because you don't need a lot else in your crafty stash to make them look amazing I mean if you are just picking up that um, that set of pens um, that we've got on today's show that set of classics or if you're going for any of the pen sets we've got on today's show that your card front colouring pads um, a bit of card to make up your card bases bit of glue in your basic tools like your scissors and you really will be amazed away even creating the most amazing looking cards because these card fronts are the focal point they are the real showstopper to your cards you don't need a lot else to make them look absolutely amazing Perfect. i mean I when you've got saying, artwork this strong you're finished doing that side before absolutely. so that i don't i want everyone to be able to see you doing whatever you're going to do with the unicorn. Yes. Should we see how Pam's doing? While oh, you carry yes. on doing that, because it's yes. more of the same, yep. should we see how Pam's doing? Because I don't actually even know which images Pam's colouring in. Yes. Are you she... colouring the same images, Pam, as Lily? Or have you picked different ones? I've picked different ones. I've you... been working Ooh. on this one. Oh, wow. Look how far <gasps> you've come. Oh, goodness. That looks oh, incredible. He's amazing. Wow. And I love you, the intensity of the colour, the pink at the base of those flowers. They look... That looks stunning. Absolutely. Yeah, I like to blend two different shades to make the colors pop. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So which pens were you using? The illustrators, like you said, or were you using the classiques? Yep, I'm mostly using the illustrators, and for the colors I don't have, I'm mixed in my classiques and my tri-blends. Yeah. But they, they're, they're the same inks, but with the different nibs and everything, so they will yep. mix absolutely yep. perfectly. There's no problem mixing um, Tri, the tri blends with the classics with the illustrators no. at all oh wow we'll let you carry on because you seem to be doing really well that one's nearly colored by the looks of it that's perfect so we'll carry on and lily's just going to finish off doing the foliage and then she's going to I'm, I'm interested to see how she's going to do the unicorn i really Ooh. am so we've done his mane but his is body but i'm have. sure she's going to show us some wonderful techniques Absolutely. Well, I'm to gonna do that. I'm going to do my very best, but yeah, oh. you can really go to town with your unicorn. Perhaps bringing out all your ombre effects, it would look amazing. Doing a rainbow unicorn would look absolutely fabulous. Um, bringing in your sparkle pens, that might be something we're doing. We'll oh, have yes, to yes, see. I, yes, I did hear you go off hunting for certain oh. pens just before we All the secrets are air. coming out now. <laughs> <laughs> so we do say that these are for your alcohol pens and absolutely the card has been designed um, for best use with your alcohol based mediums whatever they may be and of course like Pam said of course you can be mixing and matching all your different alcohol based mediums within your Spectrum Noir range which is one of the many things that I absolutely love about Spectrum Noir it's, the more you've got the better it gets of course because you've got more to play with but you've also got more options in terms of mixing and matching so the options do just become sort of endless which is amazing so these will work with all your alcohol based mediums but if you are adding a little bit of sparkle pen, I know they are um, water-based mediums, but if you just add in a little bit of the clear overlay, then that's absolutely fine at all. It's just you don't want to be saturating these with water and adding a lot of water because they've not been designed to take um, your water-based mediums. But a little bit of glossy highlights or a little bit of your clear overlay over the top is absolutely fine. You'll have no problem with that at all. It's just you don't really want to be drenching these yeah, you're not, you're not so saturating the card, are you, with no. those products at all? No, because you'd just all. be adding a little little accent detail, so it yeah. will be absolutely perfect. Absolutely. Wow, this is coming on 
beautifully. And again, like you say, you could you could go um, all out with your with your unicorn colours. Those leaves could be any colours you wanted. If you really wanted to go with that unicorn theme, couldn't you? You could have the rainbow foliage. And yeah. I, th wow. I love it. And this is what I love about colouring, um, as opposed to using pre-coloured toppers, is you're in control and you make it personalised to the person that you're giving it to, or just to what you want to do. And if you're in a mood today that we're going to colour all in pinks and purples, then colour all in pinks and purples. It's it's entirely up to you, isn't it? Absolutely. That's the thing about when you colour your own images. You've got complete control. You can do whatever you want to do. Whatever your favourite colour is, then absolutely go for it. I was thinking these leaves would look really nice in sort of greeny blue tones, almost a bit like eucalyptus. Yes. I am I barking up the right tree or the wrong tree? They're the right sort of shape, aren't they? Yeah. They're not eucalyptus, but I know what you mean. They've got that sort of tropical leaf shape yeah. haven't they yeah absolutely you could be calling this tropical bring out all your bright yellows your oranges your pinks it's going to look amazing and such a contrast to the technique we're doing at the moment we're using they are fairly bright colors but they're not really sort of out there or tropical but just changing up the colors that you are using to color up these images will give you completely different effects and that's brilliant you get six of each within each pad think six different options all six could look completely different and that's a lot of the fun in colouring. I have to say I'll never colour an image the same more than once it's just too boring I've got too many pens too many different colours to do the same thing twice that would look really nice actually wouldn't it with your triptych frame using Ooh. the same image yeah coloured in completely you could almost like ombre through your colour ranges as you go across so you could oh, start yeah. You'd have to, almost have to lay them out and you'd start maybe say at the left using one colour and then go across with another colour and almost jump across the two pictures with one colour if that makes sense and ombre across so that well that would look amazing wouldn't that it? That would wouldn't it but at the end of the day the artwork in these pads is so strong that even if you don't want to colour them you could literally leave them in black and white and they'd look amazing maybe even ink the edges with a brownie type ink do do a bit of a sepia technique onto there don't even have to colour them if you don't want to. The artwork is so incredible that that's still going to look absolutely amazing. But very easily we've created our leaf effect onto there. We've got light and shade, we've got that extra little depth with that yellow around the edges. But so, so easy to create that. And that's lovely how you've got the, the, the turquoise flower matches the mane perfectly. Yeah. Because it just, it gives it that unity, doesn't it? And I think you yeah. always need something in your um, image whatever you're making to bring all those layers together absolutely so we've got the flow of that design if we just had the green uh, the bluey tone there and not there it wouldn't flow so much by having the that color coming all the way down it draws the eye into the center of that image so it just works makes it one doesn't it I think. absolutely yeah so i know we think of our images as different separate parts when we're coloring but that um, sort of unifies absolutely everything onto there so we're going to go with the unicorn's wing and the body and we're going to go in with IG2. And I'm just going to add a very small amount of this to the wings because we're actually going to add a little bit of our clear sparkle pen to the wings. I'm not needing to worry about adding too much depth and shade onto that. And it's like Corinne was saying that her and Craig were saying yesterday um, on launch day how important it is not to leave anything um, that's white actually as white by adding a little bit of colour onto there. And I know it sounds really bizarre, but um, it makes it look more white. It does make it whiter, doesn't it's it? It's bizarre, you, you isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Because there's very little that is pure white, isn't it? Because it's where things meet. And, you know, if you think of a flower, if you think, I always think apple blossoms white. Yes. But it isn't. Absolutely apple not. Apple blossoms only white on the outside. Yeah. In the centre, it's probably, it's either pink or yellow, depending on the, the blo or like a greeny yellow. So, yeah. There's very little that is totally white. Um, and all you're doing now is you're emphasising the, the, the areas that are white, that are the most compact, I, yeah. I guess. Yeah, absolutely. So we're just adding a little bit of IG5 over the top now. So only two colours, but it adds that depth onto them. It just makes it look more realistic. It still would look, look really nice with just a bit of sparkle pen onto there, but by adding are grey tones onto there it's going to look absolutely fabulous now within your sets you are getting several different types of greys and greys are so so important but it's really important to actually get the right sort of grey for your image so we talk a lot about warm greys and cool greys and it can all get 
I'll be honest, it can all get a bit technical and a bit confusing and oh, it just all sounds a bit complicated sometimes, but it's actually really, really easy to work with your greys. So if you're working with warm tones, warm colours, then you're going to want to go with a nice warm grey, a nice brown grey, something like that um, to add onto your images when you're using your greys. And I've just noticed I've forgotten to colour in that stalk, so we're just going to go back in and add that stalk onto that. Um, and if you're colouring in cool tones, then you're going to want to use more of a cool grey, so something like a blue grey or an ice grey. So I'm using the ice greys here, just because the colours that I've colour the rest of the image in a quite cool tone so we've got that bluey tone and blue tends to be um, a cool colour so we're wanting to add uh, a cool icy grey onto our image just to make everything sort of work together nicely and not have it jar and and have the sort of two colour tones onto there which wouldn't look quite quite as good if we were to add a brown grey onto here but you do get the two different options within your set so if you are colouring something maybe like a red or a really warm purple and um, then you're going to be wanting to go with your your patch your brown grey so it's a little bit warmer if we uh, i've got the grey pack here so is this exactly what lily is saying so here if you look at this shows me the six colors that i've got hopefully you can see them there and here we've got our cool greys our ice greys here these first three and then you've got your sort of warmer greys, which, as you can see, they're grey, but they're nearer a brown. They're more of a brown grey, so you'd be using these if you had your warmer tones. So, you know, we've thought this through and we've given you... So we've given you your three-pen blend, as Lily was referring to it, but we've given you a second one, but on the opposite sort of spectrum as such. So you've got your cool and your warm as well. And that's going to work whether you're looking at the greys, or the greens or whichever one. Oh, that is absolutely gorgeous lily that is how stunning. easy is that but it, honestly such a difference so all i'm doing i've got the lines in there already that gives me the clue as to where I, to add my shading i'm not having to think about this at all this is the strength of this artwork and real credit to um the design team that we've got up at crafters companion we've got some of I've got to say, some of the, the most talented designers, illustrators, the most talented product design team as well that work absolutely tirelessly to make sure that every single product that we are bringing out and bringing to you guys at home is, um, is absolutely fit for perfect purpose. And it's quite frankly, the best it can possibly be, which just makes our crafting lives so much easier. We're not having to think about the boring bits the hard bits, the technical bits, it's all being done for us. Now that looks fab, if I may say so wow, myself. That, you must be chuffed. <laughs> yeah. I can see you smiling. You're but, really <laughs> but I think it's what you were, we were saying is going in with a bit of colour on your white is absolutely perfect, True isn't shot. it? It looks nice, but we always need a bit of sparkle. So all I've done is I'm taking my clear overlay sparkle pen. Now we do have these on today's show. And I have to say, I have to have about three packs of these in at any one time just in case. Is it that? Mm -hmm. What if it runs out? What Absolutely. Runs out? And yeah. You do get three in a pack, so I have to have about nine um, on standby, but they're one of those. I'll have one in one room, and I'll have one in one craft tote, and I'll have one in another craft bag, and I've got one in a pencil case, because honestly, once you start working with these, you're going to be adding your sparkle to absolutely everything. But all I'm doing is I'm adding some of the sparkle onto the wings and onto the unicorn, just to really highlight those areas. And as it does dry, the sparkle absolutely does intensify. But if I bring in one that I did earlier this week, I was having a fabulous time playing and colouring this week, I have to say. You can see that the um, sparkle pen has actually dried onto yes, there. Yes, it's one of those, isn't it? just sparkling. Just see it twinkling a little bit in the light. And it just finishes that off and gives it that magical touch, which is so, so key for images like this. But you saw how easy it was to colour. But honestly, so much fun to colour in an image like that. I just love it. Right, I don't want people to think we've ignored them. For some reason, I'm not getting messages through on my tablet, but luckily I've got my phone here. And I just want to ask you a couple of questions, if I Absolutely. may. Absolutely, go Because they've it. been coming through, but I've not been seeing them. Yeah. So, Linda says, um, are these pads only for alcohol colouring, or can you colour them with watercolours? So I think you've answered that one already. Yeah, so just for alcohol pens, but that reminds me, when we launched these last month, we did have a question come through, can you use your colour blend pencils? Absolutely, yeah. But how about using your classics? and your colour blend pencils, it's going to work fab. But alcohol based or your coloured pencils will work really nicely. To Mary, Mary Pat, 1000 was saying she used the rotating board the past weekend at her virtual retreat. Oh, I like a virtual Ooh, that retreat. Sounds fab. Many people hadn't heard of it and love the idea of colouring using this gem. 
Send them our way, Mary Pat. Yep. Yeah, send them our way. We've got them, they're on the website. We've got the best prices, that's for sure. And Treasure Heart says, the magnetic board so helps me with scrapboard lay scrapbook layout. So this is what I was saying, because you've mm -hmm. got the magnetic ruler, you're going to be able to line things up if you wanted to. Now, Beth says, question for Lily, when mm. using different colours, do you have to worry about colours transferring nib to nib? Now, not I actually sure. saw Leanne answer that question. I'm not quite day. sure what you mean. So if you were colouring with one, like your darker colour and you yeah. go over with your lighter, are you worried about picking up the oh, dark colour? Oh, about like transferring. Yeah, sorry, yeah, transferring. You don't need yeah. to worry about that at all. If you do transfer a little bit onto your nib of another colour, just get a piece of scrap paper and just scribble that colour out and it'll come out. Yeah. Um, but no problem at all. Yeah. It only lasts as long as the ink behind it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. And then one last quick question coming in is what's the difference between illustrators and classics please the main difference is the nibs so on yeah. your classics you have got your fine bullet nib and your chisel nib whereas on your illustrators you've got a fine bullet nib and a brush nib but we'll be seeing that a little bit later so nibs basically excellent okay so um i think next week are going to just have a little quick break while everybody catches up. Um, and then you, what you're going to do is start showing us the second one. So Absolutely. And we're going to move on to different pens with We're going those. to go on to tri-blends and tri-blend brushes. Perfect. So tri-blends and tri-blend brushes. But just remember, Lily's showing you these with all the different pens, but you can use whichever pens you want. But she's just going to show you, maybe pick up little different techniques with each of the brushes. So this is a perfect way. It's like a, a three-in-one masterclass. So, Watch this, hopefully you can catch up and we'll see you on the other side of this little break. Welcome to Club Inspire, the crafter's companion community where you can feed your crafty obsession. Join our fantastic loyalty club today and receive 20% of your first order. We'll also give you 250 points to help get you started. Other benefits of joining Club Inspire include exclusive special offers and discounts for Club Inspire members only, exclusive sneak peek previews of brand new product launches, and of course the Club Inspire community group on Facebook, where you can access exclusive content such as downloads, offers and inspiration, and of course you can chat and share your makes with other members. You'll receive one point for every pound, dollar or euro you spend and the more points you receive, the more benefits you'll unlock. So what are you waiting for? Sign up, join the club and start rewarding yourself today. Quick buy, all your crafting must-haves in a flash. Draw, decorate, and customize your world with the colorful Spectrum Noir acrylic paint markers. Each premium paint marker gives opaque coverage on ceramic, glass, wood, and let's not forget paper, cardstock, and canvas. These versatile markers are filled with highly pigmented premium water-based paint, offering beautiful, rich, and smooth coverage. The colors can be blended together and the fast-drying opaque paint is ideal for layering. A three millimeter bullet tip offers smooth strokes and a precision valve mechanism allows rich and consistent flow with no clogging. Quick buy, all your crafty must-haves in a flash. had to make some changes to our shipping charges and we want to keep you informed. With continued pressure on domestic shipments around mainland US, we've had to temporarily increase the cost of our regular 6 to 10 working day standard shipping service from $9.99 to $12.95 and our free shipping threshold from $100 to $125. We also have some really great news to tell you. We've introduced a brand new shipping service called Express Delivery. This is a fully tracked door-to-door -door service which takes three to seven working days and costs $19.95. This option means you'll get your crafty goodies in your hands sooner, meaning less waiting and more crafting. We're also upgrading delivery services for our gold and platinum Club Inspire members who will now receive priority delivery on all of their orders. And if that wasn't enough, we've upgraded these orders to our new express three to seven day service. Your patience and understanding throughout this very busy time has been amazing. So we'd just like to say a huge thank you and we look forward to chatting to you again very soon. And welcome 
welcome back. So we're now going to carry on with the next stage of our craft along and we're focusing on our colouring pad card front collection. So this is your 156 sheets, four different collections, 36 um, sheets in each um, collection with um, six different designs, six of each. So you're going to be able to get, I'll go through them nice and quickly, you're going to get your spiritually wild which is absolutely gorgeous. You're going to get your beautiful, that's your enchanted adventure. You're then going to get your uh, butterflies and botanics. And then I'm, you're going to get your floral flights as well. Now remember, each pack has three sheets of sentiments on the back that are all gorgeously foiled. And I think we're going to see these in Lily's um, demo as well. So, Lily, are you ready so I can see you busy folding? <laughs> are you ready to show us Absolutely. the second image? Yeah, let's go for it. So we're going for our one from our butterflies and botanics next. And it's really nice to actually see how all the different card pads can work together beautifully when you're doing a triptych design like this. So I've chosen this fabulous butterfly and the flowers and I'm thinking you can actually snip out that butterfly, you could be decoupaging it over the top, you could be using it as a separate embellishment, so much you can do with these. But we're going to go a little bit funky shall we for this one, we're going to do a little bit of ombre colouring. So I'm taking some of my tri-blend brush pens, I absolutely love these, mind you I say that about all the Spectrum Noir products, I love them all, so I pr should probably stop saying it because it probably gets a, gets a bit boring, but I do absolutely love these and we're going with our pink violet blend and our magenta blend. So we're going to start off with our pink violet blend and can you see with our tri blends if we line it up properly um, you get three pens in one which is fabulous not only for allowing us to get that three pen blend really easily but also for storage it's absolutely brilliant. So we've got PV1, PV3 and PV4 all within this one pen. So we're going to go in first of all with our PV1 which is our palest um, colour within this um, three pen blend. So if you are a beginner and you're thinking I'm really not sure about getting a load of pens and working out what's going to work together, even though we've got that numbering system, it is really easy with all our classics and illustrators. If you want it absolutely readily done for you in just the one pen, then your tri blends are the ones to go for. So all I'm doing is I'm um, adding a little bit of that colour just into that centre section of our butterfly. Then I'm bringing in my magenta blend and I'm taking my palest tone, which is our MG1. And I'm just going to add a little bit of that colour down onto our, towards our bottom half of our butterfly. And at this point, you're probably thinking, my goodness me, what is going off here? Um, this is going to look bizarre. It's stripy. We've got two different colours. What is going off? Don't worry. It will all become clear as we come to blend it out. So I'm going to yes. fill in all that lower section. Those brush nibs look to be gliding across <gasps> that cardstock. Oh, honestly, they are so, so soft. Some brush nibs, I'd say they can be, I mean, I don't know if you've ever worked with any corn which are a bit scratchy, they're a bit a too splay. fibrous. Oh, my goodness, yes. When the nib splays, you, they've had it. Quite frankly, you can't use them no. in the same way anymore. But these are absolutely fabulous. You can just see, you can just see the smooth way it's gliding across that card there. It's yeah, just so easy to gorgeous. work with. And these... This particular pen is one of the ones from our studio, so you know that it's had a lot of hammer. Yes. There's been a lot of craft experts that perhaps have not been so careful with them. But it's those nibs it's time are so perfect. Rushing, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. If you're working at home, you're probably a little bit more careful than we can be when we are working in the studio. So you know these have had a little bit of hammer. But look at that, it's still absolutely perfect. So you don't need to worry about these nibs um, splitting or splaying or doing anything funny like that. You will be absolutely fine. So I'm going in now with my PV3. Can you see we started to blend those two tones into the centre there? So two completely different pens. So yeah, we talk about our three pen blend and how all the colours within one particular pen work together beautifully. But if you want to go a little bit different, you want to experiment a little bit more, then absolutely you can be mixing and matching different pens, working together with different colour families. And I'm going put back, them back in, in the right, right one. Oh. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. You're picking up. It's funny <laughs> you should say that. I did that just last night. Did you? Did <laughs> and you get I, yourself into a total pickle then? Well, it wasn't too bad because as soon as I did it, I looked, I thought, that doesn't look right. I coloured <laughs> it. I thought, that's, that's not the darkest one or, or whichever one it was. And then I looked, I thought, no, it's not the darkest one, Lily. You've put the wrong nib on. <laughs> and it's about that point when it's about half 11 on a Friday night. You think, do you know what? It might be time to get some sleep now. But, you know, <laughs> colouring was calling. <laughs> 
We're going now with our PV4, which is our darkest um That's a lovely colour. colour. Oh, it's Quite gorgeous. Um, aubergine, isn't it? Oh, or yeah. eggplant, as we yes. say, in the US. Yeah, that's oh, what that's reminding me of. Oh. Gorgeous colours. So we've done that sort of top half. We've done our joining element. So we've blended the two uh, colours together. Now all we need to do is we need to go and add our shading to the bottom half. So we're working with that magenta blend. I'm now on my mid-tone, which is MG3. And towards the bottom, we're adding a little bit of that shading just to bring um, that shadow and that shade onto that bottom section. But honestly, these brush nibs are an absolute dream to work with. They will glide over your cardstock so, so effortlessly. It allows you to blend and get that seamless finish super easily. Honestly, it's such a do joy you, to colour. Do you know, when you started that, you, I couldn't see where that was going. <laughs> yeah, it was one of them, wasn't it? These are colours that have been laid down, but it's when you start to blend and it's Absolutely. really come together. I'm going to be totally off um, point at the moment. And Go Stephen on. Nicole on Facebook has just said, just ordered the Gemini Junior in rose gold. <gasps> so now oh, I'm I so have jealous. the Mini, the Midi, the Junior, the A4 and the beast of all daddies, the pro. Oh, wow. Oh, Stephen. I've got one. I have got one. <laughs> oh, I tell you, the two, next two on my list are the rose gold because it's pretty, it's shiny. I'm a little bit obsessed and I've I needed it for a long time. I think you're going to have to be quick if you time. want that though. Oh, I, I know the stock levels are very, very, very yeah. low. Um, and then as well, the pro's also on my list. That yeah. is... But, you know, I've, if my mum is watching, can I just say it's my birthday in June, um, as you're well aware, uh, and I, I wouldn't mind a pro, <laughs> just, to, just to put that out there. But um, that then links back to a question that we've been asked by Lorna Jane, yes. which goes to the other end of your demo, yep. saying, do all the frames fit in the Gemini? It says pro on one of them, but I thought Craig was using the A4 Gemini. Yeah, absolutely. You can use all of those three shadow box die sets within your normal Gemini. So um, when you, one of the frames, I remember rightly, because I was with Craig when he was doing it, so I think it is... Five the, by seven. The five by seven. Yeah. The card stock you need is just slightly bigger than A4. Yeah. But it will still fit in your A4 Gemini because you've got that little bit of wiggle room at the end so you can actually put the card, the plates are a little bit bigger than A4. So you, even though your card stock's a little bit bigger it, and the, the die is dead on, it's like bob on A4 yeah. in size. Mm -hmm. So as long as your card stock is a little bit bigger, it'll still fit through your A4 Gemini. So yes, I think they've put Pro on so that because the, of the, the card the stock the pro size. Is you can do lots of things with it. So if you did want to use a larger card stock, you could. But also maybe you wanted to cut some of your, your, your trim at the same time. You'd be able to get it all on your pro plate. Because that was the theory of the, the pro. It wasn't necessarily about going for bigger dies, although you can put bigger dies in. It was about being able to cut more in one pass of your um, plates. Absolutely. So, you know, if you had the pro, you'd be able to cut the box, the shadow box, and some of the um, of the borders that go over the top as well. So, um, Lorna Jane, yes, you can put your largest shadow box through your A4. It will be snug, but I've seen it cut. I've yeah. seen it cut live, and there is absolutely no doubt that it cuts perfectly. Yeah, I mean, like I've just been saying, I want a pro, but I don't have a pro, and obviously I've cut all these myself at home on my standard size Gemini, and they have cut absolutely perfectly. Um, so yeah, don't worry, you can be getting your shadow box dies if you just have, I say just, <laughs> you know, it's still a fabulous machine. You're so dismissive, machine. aren't you? I know, just. Oh, it's, it's just, it's just brilliant, it just cuts everything, you know, it's it's one of those though, it's but so good. But I think we good. do get you a little take bit it to like granted. that because yep. you've, you've become so used to expecting that level of cut Absolutely. that when you don't get that level of cut, you're like, oh, what's going on here? <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Because yeah crafters companion products are absolutely amazing but they end up spoiling you then if you ever use anybody else's products you're like oh blimey they, these don't work quite so well do they so i've had i've had yeah. plenty of discussions over the years with um, a, a presenter um when we talked about die cutting machines and they were like but it's the dies that do the cutting and no. yes it is the <laughs> dies that do the cutting and dies I don't, don't cut that's that. the thing dies do not cut they work on pressure yes. and you need pressure from but the machine if the pressure isn't right in the die cutting machine it does, the, the best die won't cut. 
Absolutely. So yes, it is the actual dies that are doing the physical cutting, but they've got to have the right pressure, haven't they? And yep. that's what you're going to get with your Gemini. I mean, I've been using my Gemini now for probably six weeks or so, and I've never had a miss pass. No. Not once. No, and I don't worry about where I need to position it on the plate. I don't worry about the angle or anything like that. I can literally fill that full A4 plate. It might be decorative dies, it might be basic dies, I might be cutting glitter card, miri card, whatever I want to cut, I know that that machine is going to handle it. It's an absolute workhorse. I'm not being funny, but the amount of crafting us guys do, we need it to work. We've not, quite frankly, we've not got time to be messing about, sending something through three or four times, turning it this way, that way, forwards and backwards as the song, as the song goes. But honestly, we've not got time to be messing about like that. And you see us day in day out using that machine on the shows if it didn't work you know we'd know about it you guys would know about it you'd see it not cutting so hey, Lily, do, you know, do you know and I, this is a rhetorical Ooh. question because i think i know the answer Ooh. do you know somebody called rachel pool uh, it could be my mum that's going to be buying me uh, the gemini <laughs> pro <laughs> it's, it's lily's mum here oh no here we go i'll be in see trouble what i can do <laughs> <laughs> oh it wasn't a no <laughs> Ooh, there you I, go. That's a nice result, isn't oh it? Oh yeah, I'll take that. Mind you, I'll come off, uh, come off here at five to a message saying, "You cheeky so and so." <laughs> I just had to say that to save face. <laughs> and then Mary Beth is saying, "Love the way this butterfly is turning out. Beautiful colours, Lily." Do you know what? When Lily started and she said, "Oh, <laughs> you, this, this looks strange," I was like, "I was like, I can't say on air. I can't yeah. say on air." Yeah. But I couldn't see it at first. But Absolutely. once you start to blend. And it's just, it just looks beautiful. It I have is to say so, that so pretty. That's one of my favourite things to do. To, something that starts off looking terrible and Not then terrible, turns out you look, can't, it did, I mean, to be fair. Is, you can't see the end goal. Perhaps yes. that's a better way of putting yeah, it. Yeah, but I love stuff like that that starts off looking really like nothing and then you get a fabulous result because they are the most satisfying sort of techniques. And um, if you start with something, you think, blimey me, where am I going with this? Was this such a good idea after all? It looked a lot better in my head than it does in real life. But then when it starts taking shape, and you can see it takes shape fairly quickly, really. I mean, I'm on the, the final wing now. When it starts to take shape, it is so, so satisfying. But of course, this sort of technique you can be doing on absolute, absolutely anything. It would look fabulous on your unicorn um, wings, I'm thinking. A little bit of an ombre brown to there would look amazing. But I mean, for some of the wings, I started off with the pink tone. For some of them, I've started off with the purple. It doesn't matter at all. The most important thing is I start with that center section, those two palest colors. I get those blended out nicely, and then I sort of leave it down to me whether I then work um, with the purple area first or the pink area first. It's completely up to you. So if you do think this is stunning and you think, to you, right, I like that colour combination and I, I, I think I want to have a try with this and I just love the way those pens are literally gliding over the paper, then maybe you want to be getting the tri -brand Blend Brush Marker Complete Collection. Now you look at that and you say Complete Collection, it's only 24 pieces, mm, there's not a lot, but that gives you 72 colours because you've got three colours in every single pen. So you're getting 72 colours for basically 72 pounds. So there we go, it's a pound of colour, which I think is absolutely phenomenal. So 71.99, 10% off today, brings the price down from 79.99 to that 71.99, or $107.95. But if you're a Platinum member, the price drops even lower to 57.59, or $86.36, which is amazing. And I've got this here, I don't know if you can just see this just very quickly, because I don't want to interrupt what Lily's doing for too long, but look at this, look at the range of colours. Now remember, those are only the, well, that's like an ombre. So you, each one of these little um, hexagons, I think it is, you've got th three colour tones within those. So this is just like your base colours and then you've got all of those um, different shades within there as well. So you've got your 72 colours uh, for £72, which I think is fantastic. Absolutely amazing, isn't it? And I have to say, that was the first set of tri-blends that I actually started off with. Um, I have to say, yes, I have collected all four boxes now. You guys know what I'm like. I've got to have absolutely everything. I'm 
I'm yeah. terrible. Um, and El <laughs> Ellen is saying she wants to get the tri blend brushes to use with her classiques. And you can, you can <gasps> use them together. Absolutely, yeah. They're going to work so, so well. Oh, so now you've, you've switched off a yeah. tri blend. Now, the way you can t I can tell straight away yeah. is your barrels are different. Absolutely. This is, this is, this is craft just designing. It is, it shows, it, doesn't it? It sounds so daft, but honestly, when you've got... I mean, you can see my table. When you've got a table full of pens, you don't know where you are half the yeah. time. So by having different coloured barrels, it makes such a difference. So if it's got a grey barrel, it is our brush pen. If it's got a black barrel, it's our normal bullet nib tri blend. And we're going to be showing you the difference between these. Obviously, the obvious difference is the nib is a little bit different. But in exactly the same way, they are still tri blends. We've still got basically three pens in one. We've got our light, medium and dark and they work in exactly the same way. The only difference being is our nibs. So we're going in with our aqua blue blend, which is our palest colour. And you can see we've got such lovely fine detail onto um, that bullet nib. And the only difference, a question we get off asked so, so often is, what is the difference between perhaps classics and illustrators? And that's the nibs. So we had that fabulous question um, earlier about that. So yes, the nibs are different. And then we get asked, well, why do I need both? Or do I need both? Or do I have to choose? Or is it personal preference? I have to say, <laughs> I get asked and I say, you've got to have both because, you know, you know what I'm like. I'm a proper crafter. You've got to have everything. But the reason being that we like to have both of them is because the di they're different for different techniques. So if you want to create hair and fur um, and do a lot of your flicking techniques, like we did on that butterfly, then your brush nibs are perfect because they're so soft and they give you that flicking motion really, really easily. They'll be perfect for all those sorts of techniques. I can it see straight away you've changed not only possibly the way you're holding the pen, yeah, absolutely. but the way that you transfer to, to, the, to the card. You, when, as soon as you get a bullet nib and one in your hand, you seem to go into circles. Even yes. when you're doing the, I'm just watching you and I'm picking that straight up straight yeah. away. Um, Absolutely. Straight away, even colouring big areas, you're doing it in circles. I know you're doing a little bit of flicking there, yeah. but when you come to blend, you'll do it more in the circle bits. Yeah, but when definitely. you were with the brushes, the whole thing was more or less, you, weren't, you, didn't, you didn't sort of brush across the page, you no. were just flicking with yeah. it all the time. Absolutely. So it's just different techniques. And I am still flicking a little bit, um, but it's just a different sort of flicking technique. I'm not really wanting They're to get texture. Flicks. Yes, they absolutely are. That's that's right. Um, and they're sort of they're thinner almost, if you like. So if you're wanting to get into really, really fine detail, although because your brush nibs do taper into a really fine point, you can still get really fine detail with your brush nibs. But if you do do your really, really super detailed images, then I would say um, that your, your bullet nibs are better for that. It's just different pens, different uses, yep. different techniques, um, but definitely have a go with them all. And of course, mixing and matching them on the same image like we are here. It's not just one image, one pen, one well, They're, the, they're the same inks, aren't they? Absolutely. Just the different so I know these are like you pre-printed, um, well, I know you said pre-stamped, but they're not <laughs> the pre-printed images. Yeah. But Gina is saying, Gina Shaw is saying, when stamping, what make of ink pads would you Ooh. use with these pens? Now this... Right. The answer you're going to give is whether it's, it's going to apply for your brushes, your um, illustrators, your yep. tri brands, or your classics. Yep. This is the same answer, isn't it? Yep. So they're all alcohol-based mediums, so you need an alcohol-proof ink. Now, in the past, we had to learn about what was dye-based, what was water-based, and all the rest of it. Spectrum Noir have made this easy, and they've literally told us on the ink pad what they thought. Oh, I know. So honestly, this used to be such a headache, Corinne. I don't know it about you, but it was one of those. It's like, it was oh, still, which one to oh, use? did I use my memento? Did I use yeah. my stays on? Did I use this or did I use that? But no, it's so, I think Crafters Companion have made it foolproof. Yeah, again, it's, it's going back to Crafters Designing for mm. Crafters. They've called it alcohol proof dye. So if you pop onto our website, look for our finesse alcohol proof dye ink pads this is the black one i have to say it's my go-to um but we've got different colors in the range as well there's like a, a couple of um there's a brown one and a couple of grays but you need your alcohol proof ink and that's going to be for any of your alcohol based but mediums don't use that with your watercolor pens no if you have hey right, i've got got one here if you've got your water-based mediums so your sparkle pens your aqua pens your tricolor aquas anything water-based 
Again, it's easy, finesse, waterproof, <laughs> simple. It could not be any I, easier, I stamped seriously. with that, literally seconds after stamping, I just brushed it over with a wet brush and nothing budged. It's amazing. Well, some of our, you'll have seen some of us do this on air, we'll stamp straight away and we'll pour a glass of water over the top yeah. and it won't budge, like it dries straight away. Absolutely amazing, but alcohol proof or waterproof, depending on what you're using, but super, super easy. Okay. So that's what, if you're gonna be doing your stamping. That's perfect. Right, we're going to um, check in with Pam and see. So you carry on with your colouring, if Absolutely, that's okay with you, I certainly then, will. Lily, um, and we can do that. So, Pam, how are you doing? I just finished my second one. Oh, oh wow! Oh, oh, Pam, that's amazing. Look, I always feel like I can go into those lilies. Yes. You want to. Yeah. You can almost yeah. smell them. <laughs> they look so real. I can almost smell them from here. That looks yeah. amazing. They're so my favourite flowers, so they were easy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. good choice. You know what? If we love something, it just makes it so much easier. So which, what have you got then so far, Pam? So the two that you've done, you've done the florals and a, the elephant. So you've got... Oh, amazing. So they basically they tie together because you've got that pink running across the two, haven't you? And that's all it needs is it's that... That unity the between two pink them. colours together. Yeah, perfect. Dare we ask what's going to be your third one? Oh, it might be a surprise. It's going to be another set of flowers. Another set of flowers. Oh, good I think choice, that's going to look Love Elephant it. in the middle, flowers on both sides. Absolutely perfect. So, are you talking to your dog a minute ago? Is, is, is he helping you? My HSN orders just arrived, <gasps> and all three of the dogs came into my craft area when I was trying to set the boxes down. <laughs> How exciting. Oh, anything interesting? Or don't you know what's in the just day special? <gasps> oh, exciting. What's the other big thing? Oh, the, the hummingbird. Oh, <gasps> oh wow. that, that's coming yeah. soon. <laughs> they will paper. all be coming over to the UK eventually. Well done. I bet that, I just, it's lovely, isn't it, when you've got, yeah, yeah, you're thinking, hurry up, finish this so I can open all my parcels. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, hurry up. Yeah. Well, we'll let you carry on with your third colouring and right. uh, we shall come back. So, we were talking about the colouring front, but um, we've, I've got here the Try Blend the Deep um, pens here. So Lily has been mo has moved on to these ones for her uh, her flower. So I can show you on there. There you go. Oh, that's a good shot. There we are. Look at that. That is the colour families that you're going to get in here. And like we said, these will work brilliantly with your brush um, tri blends as well. And they are different colours. So I think if you get these two collections, they would work really, really well together. So you're getting your 24 pens again, which again is giving you your 72 colours because they're your tri blends. And the same price with 10% off, giving you a price today of $71.99 or $107.95. Now, if you go onto our Crafters Companion website, um, and have a look on there. I know that there is the most amazing Spectrum Noir storage bag for your tri because oh, we were looking yes. at that last night. And it, if I remember rightly, it holds 48 tri blend pens. So I'm thinking tri blend Z blends, tri blend brushes, and a bag. And it all, it's just like it was made to go together. But you get what you want, but that to me would be the perfect. So you're there going, I want my pro. I'm like, no, mm -hmm. Lily, I want my two sets of pens all wrapped up in a little bag, which yeah. would be heaven for me. So well, the only reason I'm not saying that is because I do already have all the pens on that. <laughs> so... <laughs> Don't tell anybody though. <laughs> oh, okay, that's absolutely perfect. Right, so oh, that's coming on really beautifully. Yeah, so we've nearly finished that first flower, but how easy it was to colour this in. Just using the one tri blend um, bullet nib onto here, but giving us that depth and dimension because we've got the three pen blend within that one single barrel, saving space, but saving that thinking time, that sort of the, the most difficult part perhaps in colouring is choosing our colours. Um, but we've taken all of that thinking out and we get to enjoy just building up that colour and building up that design, but super, super easy But the to blue create. contrasting with the pink really I love works. blue and pink. I think me, I would have been tempted to, to have been safe yeah. and stuck with an, something else within the pinks and the reds, yeah. but I think you coming in with the contrast, oh, you're going even darker oh. now. Yeah, so now we're going for blue turquoise. And I have to say, going back to um, colour choices, 
tell you what, I find a lot of inspiration from my paper pads. So I'll have yeah. a look in my rather large collection of, of paper pads, let's be honest, uh, and I'll look at what colours are put in those papers because I know that those papers have been designed by experts who understand colour. So I know if there's two colours that are within um, a paper that they've been put together, I know that they work together. So I'll sort of draw inspiration. Even if I'm not using that particular paper on that project, I'll literally just have a look through and go, hmm, do you know what? Those two tones work together really, really nicely. I might not have thought myself to put them together, but if I can see them on one of my pattern papers, then it sort of gives you that confidence to pair those colours together and it's going to get you amazing results. So I think I saw this sort of colour combination. I think it was Nature's Garden Beautiful Butterflies. You've got these lovely soft pinks and teals. And I thought, do you know what? That works absolutely wonderfully. I'll have a bit of that, thank you, and I'll uh, I'll bring that into into my colouring. Um, but yeah, that's I think, yeah for good me tip. for me the paper pad that does that to for me quite a lot is the masquerade ball <gasps> paper pad. Oh, it's amazing it's, that paper pad. It brings pad. in quite a few colours that you perhaps wouldn't think to put together. Absolutely. And when you actually look at the masquerade ball paper pad, and you go actually I can use those together and it's going to look absolutely gorgeous isn't it yeah yeah um, oh. will look absolutely beautiful and yeah I'm, I'm doing a masterclass on that next week oh I know oh I'm super yeah. super excited to watch that actually can't yeah. wait, can't wait to see what you create because that is a stunning collection I know a lot of you guys at home have got that and have, have loved playing with that and um, but if you do have it already it's a perfect opportunity to actually stock up on on your papers because I know it's one of those things when we bring out new ranges one of the things that always goes first is our paper pads because yeah. let's be honest there's a few of us and myself included we have to buy multiples <laughs> one to use and one to stroke That's um, it. so they're, they're the first things from the range that tend to go so if you are running low on your paper pads then definitely tune in for that next week because that's going to be absolutely brilliant uh, i can't missed wait the question oh nearly Ooh. an hour ago so diane, oh, hello, um, diane schofield said who are our fabulous ctv production team this afternoon <gasps> so, as well as myself and lily we have johnny in my ear and okay he's producing and occasionally i can hear um charlotte charlotte she's director hi she says she says hello <laughs> and then running in and out and i won't won't say running in and out and making sure that i'm all right with my look with my cup of earl grey this has just been made piping hot is our wonderful Tracy. She's here today, um, making sure that we've got the right products here in the show and making sure I've got my cup of tea so that I can carry on talking for the yep. whole <laughs> two hours. She knows me too well. A cup of tea, a, a cup of Earl Grey, and I'm anybody's. Oh, yes, there <laughs> we go. Wow, that's <laughs> coming on. That looks beautiful. So, so easy to do that. I'm just going to fast forward to one where I've just continued exactly the same technique. All we've done to finish this off, you know what I'm like for my... Uh, my clear sparkle pen, just to the centre of those flowers. Of course, you'll be colouring all your butterfly with your clear sparkle. That would look amazing. Now, if you just want the sparkles, the we've got a special offer like on so. the sparkle pens today. See if I can find them under here. So, if you want a sparkle pen, what you're effectively buying is two of your Spectrum Noir Glossy Highlights. So, you get two of those. Now, each one of these is 60 mil. I think it's going to last you quite a long time. I don't know if I've ever seen an empty glossy highlight tube. <laughs> it would take some doing. So you're going to get two of those, and then you also buy your three pack of um, Spectrum um, Sparkle pe Overlay pens. Now that is what you would normally be buying, and that is $24.97 today. But what you're actually going to get is you're going to get your second pack of Spectrum um, Noir Sparkle Overlay pens pens sorry thrown in for free i just think these are different the package ignore the package it's the same packaging but this is just ones that have come from different prints but there we go so you yeah for all for the 24.97 or 30 dollars and 85 you're going to get effectively two lots of your glossy um, highlights and six of your sparkle overlay pens and they work perfectly with your uh, all of your alcohol pens and also your watercolour pens as well so that's a perfect combination right then Lily where yeah. are we oh I can see different colours <gasps> I can see I can Ooh. see I can see the ends of the pens Ooh. where are we now we're gonna go in with these gorgeous <gasps> little lovebirds oh they're How beautiful how stunning are those what a beautiful image we're gonna use our illustrators for this particular image so I'm going in with DR7 four and two so starting off again exactly the same with our palest one which is dr2 
With these, we've got an incredibly fine bullet nib, and then we also have our fabulous brush nib. And in exactly the same way that we saw with those amazing tri-blend brushes, and I have to say that's quite a hard one to say, tri-blend brush. Don't try and say it in a hurry, it's, it's all I would recommend. Um, but in exactly the same way with those, we've got with this that fabulous quality brush nib. And again, this is one from our CTV studio, so you know this has been used time and time again, and that nib is still perfectly intact. There's no split bits, there's no um, funny little bits of fraying. That nib is still absolutely perfect. And you can see that it actually tapers down to a really, really fine point. So again, with this image, like all of the images within these coloring, um, coloring pads, mm -hmm. we've got so much fine detail and so much intricacy within those designs. And so we're gonna need um, our, our really fine nibs on the ends of our pens, just to make sure that we can capture all of that detail and that we don't, don't go out of the lines. I mean, it's okay if we do go over the lines. You can see I have a little bit, but really it's only you that tends to notice that sort of thing. No one else looking at your artwork would see that you've gone ever so slightly outside of the lines. So it's quite difficult to go outside very much when you've got such a fine um, nib as we have with these. So if you love those pens, we've got the details on the screen for you. So this is the Illustrator 36 piece um, box. So these are your colour essentials. And I think what Lily was saying is these are the absolute perfect combination. So you've got the brush, the high quality brush nibs. These are almost like the... Um, the, 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 the professional pe cut pens, aren't they? And Absolutely. I mean, Pam was saying she loved these. But then you've got that really, really quite fine, if I put it along there, that hopefully you can see, bullet nib as well. So it's like the best of the best. So we were saying, you, I love colouring with the brushes, but occasionally I find that I can't, it, I can't get the detail because, it, you know, I can't get fine enough. Well, that's where I've got that extra fine bullet point with that. And you can see, and all the illustrators are in this, off-white, slightly grey, sorry if I lower it down, Ni it's not grey like your um, brush markers, it's, it's just sort of an off-white barrel, isn't it? So all your illustrators are like that, so you're never going to muddle them up or what you've got, but if you can see on here, look at the range of colours you're going to get in these. Now each pen is a single colour, it's the same colour at each nib, but these are your colour ranges, and again, we're giving you the the families of three, so look, DR2, DR4, DR7, so they, they, you know that those three colours are going to work together. Your corals, spice and dark coral are all going to work together, as are your yellows through to your oranges. And you can see, look, that it's almost like an ombre, can you see? They're in little colour families, just go there. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve different colour families there, giving you the 36 pence. So we're always working in that three pen blend all the way. Right then, Lily, how's it going? Absolutely so. We've coloured in our first flower using our DR7, 4 and 2. And then we're going to go in with our CR family. So first of all, we're going for CR5. We're going to use exactly the same technique as we did with that first flower. So we're going in with our palest tone. And these are really quite small, little, delicate flowers. So having that really fine um, brush nib is going to be perfect. And it's going to allow us to really capture that detail that we've got within this incredible artwork. So I'm working kind of in circular motions, not quite exactly the same small little circles that I would if I was using a bullet nib, but going round and adding that palest tone onto there just to start filling in some of that colour. And the ready tones and the corally tones all work together really, really nicely. It's going to give us a really nice colour onto this image. Then we're going on to CR7. And then around the areas where we think there's going to be the most shadow, the most depth, we're adding our mid-tone and just flicking outwards to give us a little bit of depth and dimension and shading onto there to give us that realistic quality to our coloured flowers. And then finally we're going to go in with our darkest tone, which is our CR7, and that's going to be on our very darkest bits of this image just to give us that final bit of shadow just in those areas there. So Sherry um, is really impressed with your um, tip for inspiration. Oh, she thinks that's a you. really good <laughs> idea using um, paper pads for inspiration, but she also loves using illustrators too. Ro um, Rhonda says illustrators are my favorite. She loves the, loves the nibs. Yep, and fab. Mary Beth says illustrators are my favorite pens. I love the nibs and the combination of brush and bullet tips. 
She did get the tri blend, but just for travel. Oh, there you yeah, go. fabulous. Yeah, if you are, even if you know you're crafting in a different room, not you don't even have to be going abroad or away <laughs> on holiday or anything like that. Literally, if you want to do a bit of crafting, if you want to sit down with your family in front of the telly, and you don't want to have to lug a load of pens through with you, but you need to do a bit of colouring, because let's be honest, we don't just sit and, and not craft. We've got to be doing some craft at the same time. These are going to be perfect. So you're not going to have to bring too many pens through to another room with you. Um, it's going to be super, super easy. So I love that idea. So just Crafty right. Stacy, I think you probably answered it. This might have just come through a minute or two ago. Crafty Stacy Lou says, the illustrators do these blends too. Well, I think you've actually shown us that, that how beautifully they do blend. Yeah, absolutely. So using that same sort of method as we did with our class each. So they've got exactly the same numbering system. So that letter and the numbers onto there. Um, our lowest number being our palest and our highest number being our darkest and they blend absolutely seamlessly. They are an absolute dream to work with. So we've done our first two flowers and then I'm just going in and doing some of the leaves in pretty much the same sort of technique. So going in with our palest tone which is our DG1. Then we're going in with our mid tone which is DG2 around the centre. And then finally our DG3 is our darkest tone so we're going in to the very center of our leaves like that. And it's a very similar technique to what we used. Do you remember, it feels like hours ago now, at the very start of our craft along, we used exactly the same pen colors actually, just in the classics rather than with our illustrators. And um, what we were saying earlier, that if you look at the numbering, they are the same colors. Absolutely. They're just giving you the different, the different brushes and the different nibs. Yeah, absolutely. And then I'd carry on doing exactly the same with all our leaves. I'm going to show you now onto the branches how we do those. So going in on with our EB2, and this is where I'm going to bring in the reversed end of our pen. Because these branches are so, so delicate, so much fine detail onto there, I'm using the other end. I have to say, I do use the um, brush nib the most, but because you've got that option of having your super, super fine bullet nib, when you need it, you know that it's there and you can go to that when you need that super, super fine detail. I think so that would be quite hard with your brush. You, absolutely. You'd, have to, you'd just have to take so long to be so careful, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, definitely. And because I'm not really flicking onto it, I don't really need that brush nib. Um, I'm literally just adding a little bit of dark towards the left-hand side. So I'm imagining the light source is coming from the top right. So it means the right would be in shade and the left would be um, in shadow. But I would be repeating that all the way round um, those branches in exactly the same on there. I'm going to um, finish off by showing you how we would do the birds because we're going to do something a little bit different with those. So I'm going to take our blender, our TB1 and a BGR3. So I'm going to start off with our BGR3. So we're still on in the illustrators. At Absolutely. This point. So still illustrators for this. I'm going to focus on that left hand bird. So actually we're starting off, and I'm breaking all my rules, everything that I've said um, for the craft along up to this point, you know, breaking our rules. And that's the thing about crafting, I always say don't, don't ever put limits on yourself, don't ever sort of set rules or say, oh, you can't and can do this, because honestly you end up just breaking them. <laughs> so it's one of those things, don't set yourself rules or boundaries, just have a play in an experiment. And quite frankly, if it works for you, you've had fun and you like the results, then that's absolutely good enough, that's perfect, that's what we're going for. Um, just that enjoyment and coming up with something at the end that you're really happy with is what it's all about. So, we said earlier starting off with our palest tone, now we're going in with our darkest tone. And again, with these images, we've got all the clues in there, we've got the lines, so where there's more lines, it's going to be that little bit darker, that's where we're going to have our shade. And our brush nib, like I was saying earlier, is perfect for things like your fur and your hair, and your feathers like we've got here on this bird. So you can see that I can get that realistic texture so, so easily, literally just by flicking that brush nib. So, so easy to it get all that texture and dimension into it that. It does look like feathers. I'm looking at the bit round, um, just under his beak where you've done it there. Yeah. yeah. It does look like feathers, doesn't it? It does. And how easy is this? Literally, I'm not really thinking about it. All I'm doing is I'm letting the pen do all the hard work for me. I'm letting that brush nib really work um, and getting it to work for me to give me that texture onto there. And it looks, it looks pretty realistic really quite quickly. But then we're going to go in with our TB1. So here we're actually mixing completely different colour families. And we were talking earlier about adding our um, 
our different colours into our white and adding greys into your white is brilliant like we've shown earlier to give it that realistic sort of effect and stop it looking too stark but adding blues as well is a really really good thing to do uh, when you are shading anything that's actually technically white your blues work fantastically as well and you do get um, a few blues within this box of 36 pence so you've got plenty to get started with perhaps it's your first time ever trying your illustrators this box is an absolute perfect place to start so you've got pens that will blend together that work within that color family but you've got a nice range of different colors as well um, so for this particular image i've colored it all using my illustrators but only the certain tones that were in this box the only one that i've used that's not within the box is the blender pen and we do have that on today's show so that's the only extra pen that i've used for this whole particular image so all we're going to do to finish off this image so we've done um gone on with our bgr3 and we've gone on with our tb1 i'm just adding a tiny bit more of that bgr3 onto the very darkest areas on the image but to finish that off all we're going to do is we're going to take our blender pen and these are absolute essentials there's so many techniques you can do with these they sort they don't really blend as such what they do more than anything is lift and move the color underneath I know it's quite misleading, isn't it? it a blender is, yeah. pen doesn't blend. And I was—I don't know if you saw the show with Leanne where she yes. launched the Academy of Colour. I mean, you, you'll be able to watch that back. It'll be on our YouTube channel. I um, mean, she was saying quite clearly that a blender pen isn't for blending. No, really, <laughs> it, sh it should be—it should be renamed as a remover pen. Yes, it's almost like a, a colour lifting pen. Yeah. We're going to do a little bit tip to tip transferring. So I'm taking my BGR three. And all I'm doing is I'm picking up a little bit of that colour onto the end of my blender pen. And this is what we were saying earlier about contaminating the nibs. You can colour and that will transfer. It's basically diluting down my BGR3. And so but basically, once, you, once the blender has then pushed through, it'll be back to a clean nib again. Yeah, absolutely. So we've added some of that onto there. And so that's going to be bleached out a little bit. Can you see that colour is now that little bit paler so, oh, so it works both ways absolutely so I'll you can take it one. using mm -hmm. you can use your blender pen to apply it yeah or you can bleach it off your original color and then use the bleach down color until the rest of the ink comes through and it becomes strong again absolutely and all i'd do is i'd grab my piece of scrap paper can you see we've got a little bit of the um gray onto there color a little bit more and that's gone exactly the same with this color until i'm back to my original color and that is good as new i don't need to worry about contaminating my nibs i've sort of all cleared that up now and we're all good to go again i think one thing we haven't really mentioned so far is how quickly you put the lids back on your pens oh yes. those look gorgeous so just carrying on with exactly the same technique for the rest of the image will give us a, um, i'm trying to think they like remind me of something with all the blue and the fluffy they just oh, they, they do look fluffy you do sort of want to just touch them they do they? they look yeah, yeah. they look all blue <laughs> fluffy just saying you always put your lids back on your alcohol pens as quickly as you can don't yes you? main reason is genuinely because otherwise they're going to roll on the floor and there's going to be ink everywhere but you just basically don't want them to dry out so yeah. you don't have to be super quick like i tend to be i just try and be good and then don't end up in too much of a mess and um, but you yeah i'd put them on fairly fairly yeah. soon after they're alcohol pens aren't they and it, yeah. the alcohol dries out if you're not uh, it will evaporate careful. evaporate yeah but that is absolutely gorgeous so we've got three finished now yeah. then? We certainly do. So shall we have a look what we've got so far? So we've got these all coloured up and good to go and to make oh. into our shadow box in just a moment. They are absolutely brilliant. Thank you, Lily. I mean, it's just lovely to see the different pens and to see, you know, we, so we've seen the illustrators, we've seen the tri-blend and we've seen the classiques. Yeah, right? so we start off with classiques. Oh, no. then we were yeah. So we started off with classics and then we went for our tri blend Brem brush brushes and, and normal and then illustrators. Illustrators. So yeah, so you can, you know, pick whichever one you want. And that's the great thing about these colouring pads, is it's up to you how you colour them in. So if you do want to get those, you're going to get all four of the um the, the pads and they're going to come through to you for $31.95. That is absolute phenomenal value when you think about it for 156 sheets. So yeah, if you want those, you're going to get the four collections, six designs, six of each um, design in the pack. So now 
we need to do something with those beautiful um, card fronts, don't we, please, Lily? Absolutely we do. So are you going to show us the fabulous dies that we are yes. getting within the collection? I these shall. These are absolutely right. amazing. Okay, so these are, I've just seen if there's a way up. So these are your shadow boxes. So you're going to get, at this point, you don't need to pick which ones you need to pick, uh, which ones, because you're going to get them all. So this one is your six by four um, shadow box. So this, it refers to this finished set. If you think about it here, that's your frame. These pieces here are going to fold in. That's the six by four there. And if you look on here, you can see it on there. Now look at this. These are your frames. Now you've got ones that are going to cut in, so you could maybe do ribbon threading along here. Look at these. Now, we've used the different ones on each, but you could have the same pattern on them all. You could have no patterns on them all. It's up to you. You've also got sort of borders that will stick on top as well, and these most gorgeous corner panels and the beautiful panel in the middle. So that's your six by four. This is the one that we call your slim line. And look at these, look at these beautiful mats and layers. So we've used, when you buy met dies, you pay for the metal. If we'd have just given you this piece here without these in the middle, it would cost you exactly the same because that metal in the middle would have been thrown away. We've now converted that into extra dies for you. So you're getting the absolute maximum value here. You're also getting your corners and you're also getting those sort of borders that fit onto that. And I'll show you how those work in a minute. And then this one is the big one. Now, this is the one that's possibly given a little bit of confusion. So this is the five by seven. And this is the one where we're saying, do you need your pro? No, you don't. As you can see, that is your main die and it's just slightly wider than your A4 but it will still fit through your A4 platform because an A4, our A4 Gemini is actually slightly bigger than A4 so that if you have got something that goes right up to the A4 size then it will work but why we said pro was so that if you wanted to cut borders out if you wanted to cut mats and layers out you wanted to cut all the extra bits out you could put them on the plate at the same time so as long as you've got some cardstock that's just a little bit bigger than A4 maybe A4 plus maybe you cut it down from a 12 by 12 pad or a three pad I'm trying to get to try and work it all the different ones then this will work perfectly for you now what do they look like when they're finished this is what they look like so I think all of these I've got are from this largest one these are all from the five by seven Lily might have some more have you got any over there to show us as well because I've only got the one yep, size absolutely this is your five by seven putting it onto a tent fold card which is absolutely good what a beautiful way to protect your foam flowers because we all know foam flowers can get damaged but using these bits that I was saying for your ribbon threading or here we've got a gorgeous wall hang how clever we've used the dies to cover the workings for our ribbon and displaying your um, your photographs your pictures your memories using those corners as well now I love this this is a really gorgeous triptych way so it just be about fold, attaching them in a slightly different... Oh, yeah, that's the right way up. So, yep, so you've got just folded it on there. So on that one, we've folded it so it opens out. And then this one, we've folded it towards the back. And look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? New York City, a gorgeous way to do it. But whatever I've done here, you can also do with the slimline and also the six by four frames as well. Now, if you want these, you're gonna get all three sets, but that's gonna give you a massive, massive 86 dies in total. And you're gonna be able to use these extra dies outside of this collection. You've got so many mats and layers and corners, and you're gonna get all of these today for £96.99 or $108.50. So that's gonna save you 32 pounds before you drop down to your platinum price. So if this is your first order or you're a platinum member, it's going to drop down to £77.59 or $86.80. Wow. So platinum price in the US, you're paying a, pound, a dollar a die. Wow. That's why I, that's why I always like to, to look at that and work out, you know, how fantastic it is. So which one or how many of these are you going to be using, Lily? So I'm actually going to be working with the 5 by 7 so that's the largest one. That's the largest yes. one. So what Perfect. I found personally is with these car front colouring pads, the best size to show off um, your finished artwork. If you are, of course, using it in its entirety, the whole um, sort of 
full piece, I found the best one is your 5x7. So we were talking earlier how these will fit through your normal Gemini. If we look at our Gemini plate and we look at our die, it's edge to edge, but it fits on. So I'm taking, and we've got this on the show today, our fresh white um, A3 cardstock. And you are going to need your A3 um, on two. I've done that the wrong way around. You're going to need your A3 for your um, for these 5x7 shadow boxes. So this is perfect because it's actually a double-sided cardstock, which is absolutely what we want um, when we are using something like our shadow box dies, just because you will see both sides um, of the cardstock and you do want it to be double-sided to give you that really nice professional finish onto there. So I've laid this out in my usual sandwich that I would for any normal thin metal die, although they create something really incredible and really 3D and dimensional, it's just the same uh, sandwich that we use for any regular thin metal die through our Gemini machine. And that's so just your A4 machine? Absolutely, Perfect. you can see there's no, no trickery, no smoke and mirrors here, this is our normal workhorse of a Gemini. You can see it's an A4 plate, it's not a 12 by 12 plate or anything like that, it is that full A4 size. Now the only thing I find very occasionally is I might have to, if I've not lined the plate up absolutely perfectly, I might have to trim that very, very right hand edge if it's just been um, hanging outside the pla plate ever so slightly. But well, all that's you need no to do, hardship, is it? Just one cut line. Or you yeah. can use your guillotine or trimmer if you find it easier. But um, for the sake of getting it through your machine, totally, totally easy. Uh, and to um, be honest, it does fit through as we saw on the plate. It was just I didn't line up the plate absolutely perfectly, which is not really a problem at all. Eleanor's asking, and we think this is what she is, will these dies fit mm -hmm. inside one of the purple, we think it's die storage folders, Ooh. and on one of the magnetic ma mats that go inside the purple die holder? Oh, gosh. Have we got any to hand? I don't know. Ooh. Well, see, uh, what we could do is see if we can find one in the break yeah. and mention it later. I'm not... I'm not 100% sure if they will or not, so I don't want to say yes and I don't want to say no, just in case. Yeah, we'll, do, we'll double check. Uh, we'll, we'll see if Tracy's check. got one of them in the um, yes. storage and we can have a look. Yeah, because we should have some here somewhere um, yeah. where we can test that out for you just, we'll to, try and find just out. to make sure. But that, yeah. no, that's a really, really good question, that actually. I'm sorry we can't answer it straight away, but we shall. Yeah, or well, we would have thought we'd had one round here, but. Nope. Diane's no. saying she's now going to have to go onto the um, Crafts Companion website to get those watercolour ink pads. Wondered why, when using aqua pens, my work was bleeding. <gasps> there That's you right. are. It's mm -hmm. a different ink pad for a different job. Absolutely. Um, but questions like that, see, just always get your questions in. We'll do our best to answer them. But if it helps you with something like that, then absolutely brilliant. We're glad to be, a, be of assistance. No more bleeding images, just nice and I'm crisp sure stamped images. Diane wasn't the only one that was thinking Absolutely. that. Absolutely, because at the end of the day, if one of us has got a question, chances are someone else is going to be thinking exactly the same thing. So just ask, and we'll always do our best to answer. So, so all your score lines have been done for you. All There's your no score lines. You can't see any scoreboard anywhere because I'm not using it for this. It, the score lines have already been done for us. So all I'm doing is I'm literally folding them all in the same direction. So I'm going in. In, in and you can see it's starting to take shape already really really easily we've cut three of these we're going to do one at a time I'm just going to focus on the one at a time and then we're going to repeat the process with the other two because obviously we do have three pieces of artwork so let's start with our tape so I find it easier with these actually to use my red liner tape just because um, I need something that's really really nice and thin to be able to get on these tabs because the tabs are are fairly delicate um, we need something like a three mil red liner tape, which we do also have on the show. Um, so if you are needing to stock up on your red liner tape, um, then your three mil is the best one I've found to be able to fit on these really, really nicely. So on this in inner tab, so it's the one that's got um, sort of a chamfered edge to it, it's got that diagonal um, on the very edge, we're adding our red liner tape. And I find it easier to add all my red liner tape first before I start sticking anything down rather than um, adding a bit of red liner to one piece, sticking that piece and then adding tape to another piece. I find it easier just to put all my tape down first and then we can start sticking bits together. So if we add our red liner tape onto these four sections, this is going to start forming our box. And of course we are um, using three because we've got three pieces of artwork. There's nothing stopping you doing just the one if you want a quicker project 
if you really want to go to town maybe four or five if you want to have and um, use all four different card pads you could be doing and um, this sort of project with four of your images it's totally up to you and um, lots and lots of different options but like we say I find the um, 5 by 7 size of our shadow box is just perfect for this size of artwork that we've got in our colouring card front collection. So onto these little tab bits you've got here, you've got the two areas, onto the slightly larger one add a little bit of red liner tape onto there. And these are the bits I actually stick first. So all we're going to do is going to peel the backing off our red liner tape and that one literally just folds in to your next area like so really really easily so just line that up and then just stick that down and then we're going to go in with the next one so we're going to peel off our red liner tape and the back in a red liner tape i have to say it's one of those that gets absolutely everywhere um i walked walked out of the studio early and i had one um, stuck to my top i thought thank you that's uh, that's come from that bow that i stuck on earlier um, but it is very very static but it is the perfect adhesive for a construction project like this so I find it easy to do all four of these small tabs to start with and you can see that the box really starts to take shape as we do that. You can see it's, it's part halfway there isn't it? Absolutely already? and then all the next thing that we need to do is, you can see a bit of red liner tape backing in there that's going to annoy me, we just literally fold this in like so, line it up so it's nice and level. If you are struggling a little bit with lining stuff up you do find it a little bit difficult to get stuff um, sort of perfectly straight first time round then add a little bit of your tacky glue to the backs of your red liner tape once you've peeled the backing off and then that will give you that little bit of wiggle room onto there but just once you're happy with that line it up and then just burnish it down as you can just like so just to it, give I you was that. just about to say does it do that will it fold flat for you to be able to burnish it's quite yes, handy absolutely to do that, yeah it so. makes it a lot easier to be able to do that so one tab at a time, then we're going to go around to our next one. I tell you, Lily, I love the Crafters Companion community. So Lorna Jane has said, oh, I'll have a try. Uh, the 5 by 7 is just a little too large to go oh, in the die storage yeah. folder. But I'm guessing that the slimline and the 6 by 4 will go into the die storage. Yes. Just that little bit. I think it's because we it just needs something just over the... Um, you know the A4 card stock, yes. so it's just just pushing it a little bit too much. Are oh, those lovely neat corners? Yes, so you get that sort of mitered corner onto there, which gives you such a professional finish onto all your shadow boxes. So one side at a time. Don't fight with it. Just sort of ease it into position. So just tucking that under, so we get that mitered corner onto there. One side at a time. Just peel back one of your red liner tape backings at a time rather than peeling off yeah. all of your backings and having that's a load of exposed adhesive it just makes it hard doesn't well it well that's the way madness lies yes. isn't it really mm. i mean you're ending you're ending up with um, bits of sticky flapping bits flapping around and catching yeah. on everything yeah yeah and it's stuck to your arm and it's stuck to the mat and it's stuck here and there and everywhere apart from where you want it to be exactly um, so one step at a time you can see how easy, apart from the little bit of muck inside, let's get rid of that. <laughs> We've stuck that together really, really easy. That's lovely. I mean, but it's lovely so sturdy as well. It's, it's so sturdy, but lovely square edges. Oh, we've got to. Absolutely. See. So, exactly the same with the next one. So, I found the first time I did one of these, um, it's just a little bit of mm, not exactly sure how it's going to go together. Um, but once you've done one, you can see. I mean, we were saying just now how quickly it actually starts to take shape. You can see really, really easily where everything is going to actually lie together. And as soon as you start to stick the first few pieces, it all starts to really fall into place and it all comes together quite quickly, actually. It's one of those, it starts off flat and then very, very quickly you've actually got that finished project, which is fabulous. There's not a lot of messing about. There's not a lot of working out exactly what you're going to do. Um, they are such fun to build, but really quite easy to build and I have to say the fact that you've got all you've got the whole construction element in just the one die makes it really really easy I mean I don't know if you've ever seen any um, shadow box dies yourself Corin, where you have to build up all four sides separately yeah. and then stick them together yeah, oh I've, my goodness I've ended up 
Yeah, I've yeah. ended up... Um, Donkey's back legs is um, yeah. the phrase that comes to mind. It certainly is. Having to square up the corners and get in the perfect right angle, quite frankly, forget it, was yeah. um, my sort of opinion. Exactly. <laughs> and you know it's going to be square because it's on, it's on one piece of card to begin exactly. with, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I think you're doing this one in a different order and I think yeah. that's the order I would do it in yeah. because you, you're you not going to have to tuck in and it's... Yeah, yeah absolutely. So probably the easiest to do. And quite frankly, it's one of those where I'll do it different every time I make one of these. Easiest is probably, so do your little tabs first, like we did on the first one. Then did you do your two large edges. Um, Basically the size that are square at the end, not yep. um, tampered. And then go for your smaller two edges and then just burnish it down. But honestly, these are so, so sturdy. and um, They really do feel like such beautiful quality. Perfect for all your photos. Any little 3D elements, if you make your foam flowers, I have to say, I love my flower forming. Um, perfect to add into these. It would just sort of protect them and it frames them so beautifully. Any of your decoupage, if you've got any of our gorgeous decoupage flower dies, these look amazing added into here. So, so that's if our you were putting one. on the embellishments that you get for these frames, yep. I mean, we're not this because we've got, we've got so much detail in the pictures that yep, we don't absolutely. need all that decorative element. But if you were putting them on, would you put them on um, before you'd built it or after you'd built it? Um, I, oh, hmm, oh, it's one of them. Um, before. Before. It goes back to the box making this yeah, morning, doesn't it? that's what I'm it? thinking. I'm thinking before because it's easier when it's flat. Mm. Yeah, I would definitely say it before. Um, yeah. But when you're putting something onto the inside like we're going to be doing with our artwork, I find it easier to do it afterwards rather than try and centre it up with the centre now, I know exactly where the edges are going to be. So Unless I find it's it easy exactly to line it up. the same size, because yes. then you need it to tuck underneath. Absolutely. Don't you? But when you've got a little bit of a border like we're going to have onto here, I find it easier to do once I've actually built up mm -hmm. um, this particular project. So I'm going to go in with our two longest sides. And there's nothing to say you can't um, trim down your card front um, as well. Oh, absolutely. If you want to make them fit into different frames or you want to you know, change them around a little bit. Absolutely, um, yeah. You're not trimming yours down, are you? Because they fit no. perfectly into these, these frames. Yes. But if you wanted to, then yeah. you could. So you could be um, trimming into them and decoupaging them. You could be fussy cutting elements out to you as an embellishment. You could be splitting them into sections so they're almost like um, a tri triptych in themselves. Yeah. And you so, can do so that quite much. easily because you've got um, you've got six of the same. So Absolutely. you could have one that's solid coloured underneath and then strips going down of another one yep. on top, couldn't you? That would look amazing. Yeah, lots and lots you can be doing with these. and um, Lots of different techniques. If you want to get really crafty and really, really experiment with these, um, then absolutely you can do that. And the fact that you've got six is just brilliant. Six of the same design um, just gives you more options for for playing really which is absolutely what we want this is what they're all about it's what crafting is all about it's just having a play and so much fun to see all the different things that we can create so now if you had used wet glue here you'd probably have to sort of turn it upside down weight yeah. it down and leave it for a little yeah. while to i have dry. to say i do love my wet glue but for something like this definitely red liner yeah. So, we're going to bring in our artwork. feels like ages ago we coloured in some of these. It does for the <laughs> um, unicorn, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Mind you, it was nearly two hours ago. Um, you can use your all-purpose. That's what I used at home. Um, but just for a little bit of speed, we're going to use our tape runner onto that. So, a little bit of that onto the back. Then we're just going to centralise that into the centre. And that is number one. I mean, that could be a frame in itself yeah. absolutely beautifully. Uh, you don't have to do all three. Um, joined together but we're going to go to town a little bit with this project so of course we're going to have all three and we're going to join it together at the very end so the next one are birds that we coloured in using our fabulous illustrators and then finally the one we did in the middle which it was our tri-blends I can't decide which is my favourite I, I just I think there's something about that butterfly mm. and um, about how when you started off with that you're like well, where <laughs> is this going Yes. And the finished result. And that butterfly looks like it's proud above the flowers. It does, doesn't it? It does look like I've um, done another one and decoupaged it, but honestly, I promise, 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 promise I haven't. It's just the one flat image. Now, we're bringing in a piece of paper, well, cardstock now, and it is about 12 inches by 4 inches. And this is sort of our trick to um, join these together. So I'm going to have my butterfly in the middle, unicorn top left, that bottom right, yes. 
I'm going to turn them over. Now you and can put these in any combination, any absolutely. shape. You could come, you're doing them in a nice line. They could go up one, you know, one down, two up, or however, couldn't you? Absolutely. And I have to say, I spent far more time than I should have done um, playing around with them and deciding what order to have them <laughs> in. Um, but it's totally not really up to you how you want to do with that. Um, but yeah, lots of different arrangements that you can do with these. So onto the back of this strip, I'm adding pre plenty even of our tape runner. Now you Your can glass mat is going to be key here to making sure everything's Absolutely. square and straight, isn't it? So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to join them together. And the first time I made this, um, I didn't do this step and I thought, why didn't I join them together? Daft thing, but you know, it makes it a lot easier if we join them together and then we do our... Um, our backing piece next so adding that onto there like so and that's going to join those two just roughly and we're going to have to quickly pop in with Pam in a minute oh so let's just see how we Pam's seen doing much of her today she but let's say we've left her we've left her to it I think um, she's enjoying her colouring too much <laughs> who can blame her she's doing some fabulous she's fabulous she's nodding good good yeah. she's enjoying that so oh, hopefully good. we can catch up with her in two minutes yep so then we've stuck the three together and then our final bit is just to add that backer onto there just to join them a little bit better you could be adding a hook onto the back or you could be adding a little stand if you wanted it to be able to stand but I almost forgot so that's looking fabulous but to bring in just to finish it off I've used some of our fabulous um, sentiments, foiled sentiments are silver ones for this one, um, just because we've got sort of our cool greys onto there. Let your dreams be your wings and collect beautiful moments. And this is just going to sort of unify everything. And I've realised I would have done it actually the different way around to my original one. Um, so just a little point of difference. Um, I'd, I always say I don't like creating the same thing more than once. Um, so a little bit different to our original one. And then our second sentiment we're going to have down onto there. I have to say I do like adding multiple sentiments, but that is our craft long all finished. But how that much is fun is that to create? Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. So slightly different to our other much. one, ever so slightly, but that is our craft. <laughs> so they could almost fit the together. <laughs> well, they could just be mirror image either side, yeah. couldn't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> perfect. Thank you so much. We have loved seeing that come together. Just the way it's absolutely. So well, let's pop over to Pam, see if she's got hers finished and uh, see how far she's got with hers. Pam, how are you doing? Good. <laughs> I've been fighting with my red liner tape, so I've only got one together, but... Oh, wow. That wow, is beautiful. That looks fabulous. So that's your third image. And again, you've got that pink running through so that they all, all tie together. So absolutely gorgeous. So you're going to finish the other, t other two and put them together. Are you going to do that? What layout are you thinking of doing with yours? Similar to Lily's or maybe... To Lily's, but I might actually elevate the center and then lower the two sides. Yep. And that's it, you see. It's... It's all, it's all in your hands how you do it. I hope you've enjoyed um, joining us today. We've left you to it, but I think with colouring, that's a bit of how it is, isn't it? you just got to get into that uh, colouring coma, as somebody <laughs> said. <laughs> yes. Good. So have you opened your parcel? No, it's still sitting oh. next to me, waiting. <laughs> We're impressed. <laughs> We're really, really impressed with your self-control, Pam. So uh, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you have the rest of a good day, because... Oh, what will it be? What time is it there with you? So it's midday? It's almost noon. No, almost noon. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've got a lot of day left. You could get a lot more crafting done. So mm -hmm. uh, enjoy. Yeah, we'll be dark here soon. So have a fantastic time and we'll see. I think you're on another craft along quite soon. So uh, we'll see you Monday. Then. Monday. Oh, Perfect. Friday. All right, then. We'll see you on Monday. And thank you so much, Pam. Bye. Bye, Bye Pam. Oh. Right. A uh, quick question. Oh, yes. Quick question before quick. it goes. Is it, Diane says, is it best to make the shadow box up first and put your project into the shadow boxes or put your project into the box and make up the shadow box around your project? I think you answered yeah, that. Yeah, I you? find it easier to make up your shadow box first and then put your artwork in because it's not exactly the same size as that frame. It just allows you yeah. to centre that a little bit easier if you've made the shadow box up first. Yeah, I was looking at them. So if you were doing something like this one we've got here where the paper has gone behind the, the um, frame so this you know wasn't a picture then you need to put that in first so it all depends whether you want that like that or like lily has done and you've got a slight edge all the way around um oh mary pat says excellent craft along lily oh, bravo you. and thank you 
Thank you. And uh, yeah, that is it for our comment today. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Lily, we're back at 7 p.m. 7 o'clock which is 2 p.m. Um, East Coast and 11 a.m. on the Pacific time. What can we see from the craft house later? So we've got an embossing and stenciling special, which I'm super excited about. So I feel that embossing folds and stencils are a little bit of the unsung heroes of craft. So we're going to shine a spotlight on them and show you lots of fab techniques you can do with all your embossing folds and stencils. I can't wait, so make sure you join us both again then. Yeah, that will be absolutely brilliant. Because like you say, people, we don't always realise how much you can get out of your um, embossables. I think you gave us a sneak peek of how much you can do oh. with that box earlier. Yes. <laughs> so thank you so much. We'd love to see you back here at 7pm. Um, gives you two hours to go make everybody's tea and then come back and see us later. Because we'd love to see you. 7 till 9. And that will be um, for our craft house. So it's been lovely to um, see you. And thank you so much. And see you later. Bye.